in overall CFD cycle, mesh generation is the most critical and many times a time consuming process. The simplest definition of mesh or grid generation is that it is the process of dividing the domain in small subdomains. You can imagine that the smaller subdomain is equivalent to a control volume we have used during the derivation of fluid dynamics and heat transfer equations. These small subdomains or volumes are typically referred as cells or elements in CFD community. As discussed before, the requirement of grid generation is mainly due to the method of solving the governing equations. We use numerical methods like FDM, FEM or FVM to solve the discretized form of equations. This then also demands for discretizing the domain or creating the grid. For any CFD engineer or to be very specific, for any pre-processing engineer, the grid generation task is divided into two sub-activities. The first activity involves dividing the surfaces or boundaries of the domain into 2D elements like triangle or quadrilaterals. The second task is dividing the volume using shapes like tetrahedral, hexahedral, pyramids or prisms. It is not necessary to use only one type of cell for meshing complete volume. In many cases, a mesh may include combination of all type of elements. To elaborate more on the definition of a grid, refer to the figure on right hand side. In this case, the domain of our interest in which we want to solve the governing equations is the region between two concentric circles. For creating the grid, we have selected a simple triangular shape for subdomain or a cell. After completion of grid generation process, the domain is filled with set of triangles. The generated grid should follow some governing laws and should have some critical properties. The first important property is that all the triangles should collectively fill the complete domain and there should not be any unmeshed region in the domain of interest. The second property is that none of the triangles should intersect with each other. All the triangles should be connected to its neighbors at their vertices. If you closely observe the grid generated for the region between two concentric circles, you can notice that it follows all these critical properties. Apart from these properties, in order to get good quality solution, we should also look at other properties of a mesh. This includes quality of a mesh, distribution of mesh nodes and its growth ratio and many more. Later in the lecture series, we'll discuss more about different quality criteria one should check before submitting it for the solver. There are many governing factors which decides the shape of the cell one should select for meshing. The most important factor is that the selected shape should be supported by the solver. During the solution of governing equation, solver needs to do some mathematical calculations over every cell. This includes calculation of properties like volume of a cell, surface area of a cell face, as well as face normals. This is possible only when solver implementation has specific functions for such mathematical calculations. So before selecting any cell type, one should always check the types of cells supported by intended CFD solver. ANSYS Fluent has support for wide variety of shapes. It supports triangles or quadrilateral elements in 2D. Many times these are referred as tri or quad elements. In 3D, it has support for tetrahedral, hexahedral, pyramid and prism elements. In general, tetrahedral and hexahedral elements are referred as tet and hex elements. A typical meshing activity involves generation of all type of elements. ANSYS Fluent also supports non-conformal interfaces between two mesh regions. We'll discuss about generation and treatment of non-conformal mesh later in the course. There are many grid generation methods and advancement in various algorithms has enabled creation of high quality grid within small amount of time. All the methods are broadly divided into three categories, namely Cartesian methods, structured methods, and unstructured methods. The structured method is further divided into monoblock and multi-block method. There are large number of unstructured grid generation algorithms, but the most popular one includes octree based methods, advancing front methods, and Delaunay triangulation methods. Generally, unstructured grid generation method results into tri-surface mesh and tight volume mesh. 
there are certain unstructured methods which can also generate chord as well as hex elements. Hybrid mesh generation process involves using more than one meshing method for generating mesh for entire geometry. Typically, a simple region is meshed with hex elements using multi-block approach and a complicated region is meshed with tet elements using unstructured approach. The two regions are then either merged with a layer of pyramids or combined with a non-conforming interfaces. Till now, in the lecture, we have seen basics of pre-processing. Now let's discuss more about ANSYS ICM-CFD, a pre-processing software.